Well, students in Australia are facing essentially a lesson lottery with vastly different experiences depending on what school and teacher they have. According to a new report, the lack of direction from government is to blame with teachers having been given very little guidance on how to teach the curriculum. Joining me live is lead author and Grattan Institute Education Program Director, Dr Jordana Hunter. Thanks very much for your time. I guess just putting this into an example, if a teacher is out there teaching, I don't know, Animal Farm or To Kill a Mockingbird, what happens from there? What blanks are they having to fill in? Yeah, that's right. So look, what the direction they get from the high level Australian curriculum is very broad and there are vast gaps there for teachers to fill in themselves. Unless they take a whole school approach, uh, teachers really are left to make a lot of choices. How much uh, historical context to cover, what passages to read, what types of other background information to bring with them into the classroom. And as a result, that really can lead to a lesson lottery where the background knowledge and skills that students develop over their time throughout school uh, has more to do with the classrooms they happen to be in than really what an, a carefully sequenced lesson uh, might involve, where, where teachers work together to build out a coherent approach. Right, so one classroom will get a really in-depth, deep dive on racial context in To Kill a Mockingbird, for example, and it might be going over some students' heads where they need basic comprehension of the text and for another class that know the basic comprehension, they get a lot of that instead of the, the, the context, which might be better for their learning. Is that an example of the sort of the mismatch, I guess? Yeah, that is a good example. And I think what we know is that students when, uh, learn best when learning is built up incrementally over time and there's really careful attention to that background knowledge, key concepts and skills that all students need to succeed. When that doesn't happen, it can mean that gaps open up uh, between students even wider than they otherwise might, uh, and teachers are left with that lesson lottery. So from one year to the next, they never really know what uh, comprehensive background the students in their class will have. And obviously, we only have a limited number of instructional moments with children throughout their schooling, so it's imperative that we make the most of every one of those. What our research shows is that even the hardest working teachers, if they're working on their own, it's very hard for them to build out a curriculum program that's well sequenced over time. So we really do need to be seeing schools taking that whole school approach. And there's a number of options, I think, where governments can step up to provide that additional support for teachers. Because after all, building these curriculum materials that are high quality is incredibly time intensive. Mm. Yeah, so uh, what you're advocating is a bit more of a almost a menu-based element, if you like, that schools get something that's a bit more fleshed out and they can pick the best option and then decide that the, the detail they want to go into. Is it a case of care for what, for what you wish for? I know previously there's been a bemoaning of, we've got to te teach this, we have to do it this way, it's the curriculum. Did departments and governments go away from that and go, OK, have all the choice you want and now it's too much? Look, I do think there is a little bit of that. Um, what we really do want to see, I think, is that whole school approach where teachers have got that opportunity to come together and form a collective agreement about the most effective way to teach. Comprehensive curriculum materials that are established at that whole school level can really make a difference. And our survey of over 2,000 teachers this year showed that when schools have a comprehensive approach in place that all school teachers are drawing on in their classrooms, it really helps them create a strong agreement amongst their professional colleagues about the best ways to teach. They're almost 50% more likely to report that they have a professional agreement across the school about the best way to teach. And it also alleviates some of that workload burden. So instead of doing that last minute uh, scramble to get lesson materials ready, we know two thirds of teachers are relying heavily on social media websites to pull lesson materials together. Instead of doing that scramble and reinventing the wheel, they're able to focus more on how to use those classroom materials to support students uh, in, in their actual uh, classroom context. Um, but obviously, uh, you know, we, we estimate it would take around 500 hours just to build out those uh, high quality curriculum materials for a single year level of work. So that's year eight English, uh, year three mathematics. That's a tremendous amount of work for an individual teacher to do on their own. Mm. So even though governments have provided that flexibility through those formal curriculum documents, there's still a huge amount of work just in implementation. And that's where we think governments really should be stepping up and helping out. Two thirds using social media is very high, isn't it? Dr. Jordana Hunter, thanks very much for your time.